Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today we are reacting to a TikTok. This video we're gonna react to went viral. A ton of other people have reacted over on TikTok. Um, I haven't seen anyone react over here on YouTube yet. I'm sure by the time I post this, there will be some of them. Um, but I saw so many posts like this on Mother's Day specifically, but this one stood out to me, and I think there's a lot that we can talk about. So we're gonna watch it together and then reconvene, and I will tell you what I think. It is a couple minutes long though, so stick with me. And again, whenever I react to a video, please do not go and send hate towards the person that I'm reacting to. This is just a springboard for me to talk about a greater issue or a greater topic. Um, it's not necessarily me attacking this person or trying to make them look bad or disagree with them. Like I'm just using this as a springboard. It can be really beneficial to learn things from other people. I know of course we have to think about nuance and the human experience and leave room for our own personal experiences. But my goal with my reaction content is just to have you really think about things and how this could apply to your life and maybe just offer a different perspective or how you could do things differently to get a better result for your own personal life. So let's watch it and then I will tell you what I think. I keep making this because I can't decide how to say what I want to say. Mother's Day is one of those days where I just expect a paper cut. It's going to sting because my husband is wonderful in a lot of ways. He really, really is. And he does a lot for me um, and I do a lot for him and we have a very happy relationship in general, but he does not really understand celebrations and gift giving. He just doesn't. And so it's one of the compromises in 20 plus years of marriage that I have just accepted that this is the reality and he is who he is. It, it's not malicious. It's not a sign that he doesn't care. It just, it is what it is. But I expect this paper cut. And every year I think to myself, do I want to bring it up? And I never do because if I have to ask for it, it, it holds no value anyway. So there's no, there's no way to win. I, I posted a little text TikTok earlier today, which is what set me off on this, where I said, again, while he's wonderful in a lot of ways, he doesn't understand when it comes to gifts and celebrations, that if I have to ask for it, I don't want it. But not asking for it doesn't mean that it is unwanted. It means that I want to be valued enough to be celebrated without having to ask. Those are different things. And every year he comes to me and he did this year and said, do you want anything for Mother's Day? The answer will always be in that moment will always be no. Because if I say yes, and he goes out and gets the thing, he's not celebrating me on Mother's Day. He's discharging an obligation that I gave him. I told him I wanted X, he went and got X, he is done now. That is not the same thing as, hey, it's Mother's Day. I value you. So I thought of this thing I thought you would like and I went to the effort and I got it for you. That thing could be a piece of toast. It doesn't have to be anything big. But the point is, he asks, he gets an answer. His application is just charged now. That's not what I want. And while I love him for a lot of other things, I accept that I'm going to get a small hurt every year that, or every holiday that they're this kind of thing occurs on. And I suspect there are a lot of women in, in similar positions. So I'm going to get on the treadmill and I'm going to run off my, my sting, run off my little treadmill shuffle, but whatever. But I don't know. I needed to say, say it to somewhere and we say it to TikTok because it's not worth creating discord in my marriage over because I know it's just, he is what he is. But just think about it, you guys. If you just ask for it, then you've already ruined it already. If you go to her and say, what do you want? You've already undermined yourself. The point is that you value her enough to do something for her without being asked. And for Father's Day, the opposite is true. She values you enough to do something without having been asked. I don't know. It doesn't feel that hard, but apparently for some it is. A lot of different things to unpack here. I have a lot of thoughts, so let's get into it. First, I want to talk about this phenomenon of posting this kind of thing online, like why post this online? You know, us, we, the internet, the people watching, is not your spouse, right? The person who you have the issue with. So I always wonder when I see these, like, why are we here? <laughs> why are we not communicating directly to the person that we have the issue with? There's a few possible goals in mind when someone posts a video like this. Um, and I don't believe that any of them help to cultivate a healthy relationship and actually usually end up doing quite the opposite. The first thing is that they want validation and support or that sort of response. You know, you're so right. Yes, queen, I feel this way too. They wanna to know that other people feel the same way and that they are in the right um, and they want the support, right? 
The next one is to publicly shame their significant other into getting what they want. Um, so they'll post this video and then they'll take the feedback that they get and go to their partner and say, everyone on the internet thinks that you are a horrible husband or that you should be getting me things for Mother's Day. I'm not saying she did this, but I'm saying there's a few avenues people usually go when they post a video like this. Um, and I, I don't necessarily think shaming someone or guilting them or embarrassing them or humiliating them into doing what you want necessarily gets you a positive result. I think that right there is crossing a line. And the next thing is that they're looking for advice or reassurance from other women who are maybe in a similar situation or from other women who maybe went through this and then changed their husband or they're looking for how to get him to start getting you things or how to get the result that they want if it's not necessarily about this, right? Maybe there's other reasons for doing this that I'm missing, but I think these are often the most common reasons why people post this kind of thing online. And again, this is not me just picking on this woman specifically. I see so many people do this. This is just an example that I'm using, but I think that this is such a violation of privacy within a relationship. And I think it is often very emotionally immature and unhealthy to do this. I would never post a video online talking about a problem I was having with my husband, ever. That's for me and him to discuss and work on our conflict resolution skills, not for me to share with millions of people online. Oh, and to not even talk to him about it. You know, she mentioned it's not worth bringing up to her husband because he is what he is, right? But I think this mindset of he is who he is or he just always acts the way he acts and just making assumptions about your partner without coming to them directly with how you're feeling or the problem, it really breeds resentment and causes a lot of problems in relationships when you assume, when you make assumptions, when you say, oh, he just is the way he is. I'm just gonna you know, expect this disappointment every single year. And perhaps sometimes there is truth to that. You know, you've been with someone so long, you kind of know how they operate. Um, you know, you know how they do things. If someone has never been into holidays or birthdays or anything like that, you kind of know what to expect. But I think you do yourself such a disservice when you fail to communicate how that makes you feel to them. And also when you let this go on for so long without addressing it. I'm gonna get into that eventually in this video, but I think the phenomenon of people sharing things like this online is just so bizarre. Again, not just directed at this woman, but at anyone who does this. Again, I'm not talking about people who are seeking help in domestic violence situations or people who are victims of something in a relationship. But when you're posting that your husband is wonderful in all these different ways and he's a great partner and he does so many wonderful things for you, but you cling to this one thing that they don't do and try to publicly you know, shame them online, I just don't think it's great. And you guys can let me know if you agree, if you disagree. Maybe I'm being overly sensitive about it, but I just feel like that would be such a betrayal in my relationship if my husband was getting online and talking about, you know, how I was a wonderful wife, but I was doing this one thing. And he was addressing people, strangers on the internet about it and talking about me to people without coming to me. Like that would tell me that there's something very wrong in our relationship where he feels like he can't come to me. Agree, disagree, let me know. The next thing I wanna talk about is that we can't force people to change, right? We can't force people to change into this ideal person that we want them to be. We can communicate our wants and our needs to them and express how we're feeling. But at the end of the day, we cannot force someone to do something for us or be someone that we want them to be. But if you don't even communicate your wants and your needs and you fail to tell this person directly about the expectations you've created for them in your head, it is not fair to them at all and you will always be disappointed. As the woman in the video says that she is, every year she expects a paper cut. Every year she expects to be disappointed because she doesn't want to say what she wants because she thinks if she says what she wants, she doesn't value it the same way. But I think in this instance, all she has to do is when her husband comes to her every year and says, hey, what do you wanna do for Mother's Day? What do you want for Mother's Day? Do you wanna celebrate? Do you wanna do anything? And instead of telling him what she just told the internet, she just says no. She doesn't even communicate to him how, when he asks her that, it makes it feel less valuable to her. Like she's not even doing that, right? I think at a bare minimum, you should be communicating that so that the next year when it comes around, he knows not to ask and just to do it. Like that's one avenue you can go. 
nobody can live up to these expectations you've set in your head, but you don't properly communicate. Now, if you're dating someone who has never been the type to surprise you with things or buy you lavish gifts or celebrate holidays or special occasions, it's very rare that this person is all of a sudden going to start doing it because in your head you want them to, but you didn't tell them. If you knew that you were with someone who didn't really find much value in holidays or special occasions, is it necessarily fair to act this way? I can see both sides. Like I would probably feel disappointed if on Mother's Day, my husband did absolutely nothing for me. But if he asked me what I wanted, I would tell him. And I would not feel like it was any less valuable when he did that for me. And I've said this before and I'll say it again, I know not everyone feels the same way that I do about this, but I think when you communicate your wants and your needs to someone as a mature adult and they listen to you and they follow through with that, and they, they do what you want them to do, you know, within reason, I'm not talking about being unrealistic. You know, I'm not talking about asking for a Chanel bag and then being disappointed when you don't get one, right? Like I'm talking about making you breakfast, going and getting you a coffee, getting you some flowers, right? I don't think communicating your wants and needs makes something less special when they do it for you. You know, if I tell my husband I like when he gets me flowers and then he gets me flowers, I'm not thinking, well, he only got me these flowers because I told him that I wanted them. I'm thinking, wow, I told him that I like when he gets me flowers and he got them for me because he wanted to make me feel special. You know, I can also see both sides and I think it's also hard now with social media when you get online and you see these things that everyone else got or what other people's husbands did for them and you compare yourself. Like comparison is the thief of joy a lot of the time. And I think that that has fueled a lot of these problems that are happening in relationships now is it's just a comparison game. It's what did she get that I didn't get? I can see both sides. But I can also see the side of, you know, if you married someone and you knew all these things about them, again, she says he is who he is. I don't think that's a healthy way to approach a relationship, but I digress. And then you're mad you know, 10, 20 years later, however long you've been with them, that they aren't doing what you want them to do, but you're not telling them, can you be mad? Because you aren't properly communicating. I don't know, would it be like a guy who marries a girl who eats like crap and doesn't work out, and then 10 years later, 10 years into the marriage, expects her to be like a fitness model? How's that fair? Like, you know the person you're marrying, and if you don't nip things in the butt in the beginning or express your wants and needs or tell people that something's a deal breaker or something makes you upset, like, it kind of comes down to poor communication. If something is a big enough deal that it causes a rift in your relationship, I think this is something that maybe should have been considered earlier on or that you need to communicate. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh. I don't know. I'm really not trying to be but I think we just pick each other apart for too many things. Like, oh yeah, he or she is a wonderful partner, but they don't do this one thing for me that I really want, and so I'm gonna post a video online about it. Is that the greatest? If someone is a wonderful husband, but their only downside is they don't really find value in celebrating special occasions, is that a deal breaker? And if it is, it should be something that you're communicating. And something that you probably should have communicated a long time ago. I think if you're going to have expectations for someone, it's also up to you to communicate those things to them. There's a lot of people who place a ton of value on how special occasions are celebrated, the gifts that they receive. And I also think it's important to know that about your partner. Like, how do they feel loved? What can I do to make them feel loved? Gifts are not something that I care about at all. Me and my husband rarely buy each other gifts, and I like it that way. There's no expectations, there's no disappointment. We tell each other what we want, we ask each other for what we want, and we buy it together often. Or we just go out for a nice meal. Then we both get enjoyment out of it, there's no disappointment, there's no, he didn't get me what I wanted, or anything like that. Say your partner communicates to you that they want to be intimate. Does that make the intimacy not valuable? I don't think so. You got to ask for what you want. And that leads me into my next point here, which is asking for what you want. As a mature adult, it is our responsibility to communicate these things because, drumroll, your partner is not a mind reader. We cannot expect them to know what we want, what we're feeling, what we desire 24 seven. This is an unfair expectation. 
And I know that it is such a romantic thing to think to yourself, my partner knows me so well, they should know what I'm thinking, feeling, wanting, doing all the time. But it's not realistic. And I don't think that it's healthy. And I think this is a very unrealistic standard in our society that has been set that causes a ton of issues in relationships. I think it is one of the biggest relationship myths that leads so many people down a road of disappointment and resentment and ultimately divorce. And again, I will be transparent here and just say, I am not the type of person who thinks telling people what you want or asking for things makes it any less special. But I know that not everyone feels the same way that I do. And that's okay too. But at a bare minimum, we've got to communicate that. Me and my husband don't often do gifts for the reasons I already mentioned. But I tell him every year what I want for my birthday. Every year, I want to go out to dinner. That's it. And every year, he makes dinner reservations. It does not make my birthday dinner any less special because I told him that I wanted to go out to dinner. But I'll also say this from her perspective. I would probably feel a little bit down if my husband didn't want to celebrate me or make me feel special on something like my birthday or Mother's Day. You know, in the future when we have children, of course. I would probably be upset if my husband didn't want to celebrate me. So I can also understand where she's coming from there. But the difference is, I would communicate that. You can't tell someone no and then get mad when they do what you told them to do. Like, it just doesn't add up. So again, I can sympathize with the woman wanting to feel celebrated on Mother's Day. I totally get it. But then she loses it a little for me because she tells him no. And I think it's our responsibility to communicate our, our true feelings, first and foremost. Because unspoken expectations are premeditated resentments. I will repeat it, and I want it to sink in. Unspoken expectations are premeditated resentments. And this is clearly causing resentment in the relationship. So instead of bringing it to TikTok, I would recommend communicating directly with your partner instead of making assumptions about your partner, instead of just saying, well, he is how he is. This is what it is. You owe them at least the communication. We should never make assumptions in our relationships. Making assumptions about our husbands or our wives, how they're gonna do something, what they're going to do, how they'll react, it causes issues. And I think you owe it to yourself and your spouse to communicate openly and honestly with them instead of making assumptions. Or to come on TikTok and talk to everyone else about the problem besides them. I don't know, as I sit here and as I talk about all this, I just feel sad for the people who are operating this way in their relationships. Maybe her husband has made her feel like she can't come to him with these feelings. If you're someone watching who doesn't make your spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend feel safe coming to you and talking about their feelings, I think that's something that we need to work on as well. We've got to learn how to be more empathetic, to listen to each other, to work on our conflict resolution skills. We've got a whole mess, whole mess of problems going on in relationships today. I think a lot of it has to do with unrealistic expectations, relationship and dating myths that, that are out there that we believe from movies or people sharing their highlight reels on Instagram in comparison from poor communication skills. We've got a lot of work to do. And I think learning these skills that you can take with you into relationships will change your life. It will help you be more emotionally mature. It will help you self-regulate. And it will help you be a better you in the long run. Like I think these are crucial skills that we should be learning. We need a relationship skills 101 where we just teach crucial skills that will help you in your relationships. Maybe I'll do it. But anyway, I'm reacting to this video and I wanted to share these thoughts with all of you because I think this is a common problem that I see. And again, there were so many other videos on TikTok, on Mother's Day specifically. And it's also helpful for me when I watch videos like this, again, on many different topics and I sort of dissect it and figure out, you know, why does she feel this way? What's causing it? What are the solutions? Because I apply those things to my relationship as well. And it's just a good reminder that your partner isn't perfect. They're not always going to live up to these expectations that you create for them in your head, especially if you don't communicate them. And it's important to be realistic about your expectations from them and understand that we are human beings, okay? We're not perfect, we're not robots, we're not always going to say the right thing or do the right thing or be perfect people, right? And that's okay. Nobody is perfect, 
Nobody can read your mind. And I think it's really important to remember those things. So if you like this video or found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be in the loop for when I release new content. Let me know down in the comments, do you agree? Do you disagree? Have you ever had similar thoughts or experiences or been on either side of the equation here? I would just love to hear your personal experiences and thoughts down in the comments. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys over on there as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.